Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Long Pamai. In our last video, we learned how to create a professional dashboard using VBA in Excel user form. In this short video, I want to share the replication of the previous dashboard in the dark theme and a few other features that uh, I have added. Uh, sample charts and also data can be downloaded for self-practice and I also will be sharing a program or a utility which you can use to easily extract color information from shapes. Um, so before we begin, if you haven't, please do not forget to subscribe for latest updates and also to support my channel. As a part of UI and UX series, you've learned how to create various customizations, uh, custom forms, input field with icons and watermarks. Uh, we've learned how to also add um, effects to the controls. We've learned how to create custom auto search suggestions. Uh, we've learned how to create a custom menu bar, which can easily be replicated with a copy paste. We've also built a real life expense app with date picker, which is built in and also a custom date picker. As you can see on the right hand side, a custom table and also a feature where you can drag and drop the files. Um, we did a detailed walkthrough on this and also with touch base on the list view, various customization, adding icons, controlling properties, and also uh, the hide and then grouping the labels and so on. Uh, we also did touch base on various uh, progress bars and uh, the custom one and the inbuilt one. And then the tree view as well, where we learn various methods and properties associated with it how to control the tree view, parent, child uh, elements, and so on. And then um, we also did um, touch base on uh, the list box, these uh, reordering items between the list box and within uh, a single list box as well. These are various forms that we touch base on 18. And then uh, this is the ink control that we went through in detail. Uh, populating the data here, handwriting recognition, uh, writing to the cells. Um, and then we also learn how to capture the ink, uh, store those data, read back those data, and so on. This is a dashboard we created in our previous video. So if you haven't seen it, I will leave the link in the video description. Please do check it out. A quick recap before we proceed. Um, the custom menu bar that you see here, for example, and the custom table that you see down here are from the UI and UX series. So if you haven't seen those, you can check out the uh, video description. I'll leave the link for that as well. And uh, in our previous video, we have learned how to basically create all this, customize this. As you can see here, it goes your application name, greetings. Uh, you can build in uh, like a search functionality here, all these icons and the KPI section, uh, which is the background, uh, like the header the number itself, and then the percentage change, the arrow pointing up, the custom icon, and then we replicated this for the rest of them, and then the charts, uh, three charts, which is loaded from Excel for demonstration, uh, which is exported on runtime to as an image and then loaded back to the user form image, okay? And then uh, we replicate this similar to this once we replicate all, all of this. As you can see here, normally we do not have uh, a component which has an image in this shape, but uh, we have designed in such a way that we design the background to reflect the same as this uh, KPI block. For example, if I load this up, the background matches with the icon, so we can see it as the circle. And then uh, all these are random data, so every time you refresh the page, then you see that uh, the image change and it's pretty fast. Um, so yeah, I think this is pretty reliable. And then we have replicated this like a sub uh, KPI section. And then if you want to include like a user or an admin, this is a sample of that. So coming to our new dashboard. So here uh, pretty much we have, you know, introduced a new chart for cash flow analysis and then uh, the rest of the data sample remains the same. Let me first load this up. So again, this is in the dark uh, theme, as you can see. And um, here pretty much everything else is same, except that you'll see the menu has shifted to the top. Um, here is the menu, again, it's customized. 
but I'll show you how I did this. Okay, this is one of them. And then I also want to show you the code that I used to um, get the colors. So for example, let's say that we have this, like in our last demonstration, we have this, let's say that um, a dashboard which you want to get a color from and replicate, for example. So normally what I do, uh, for example, I take the shape and then put it against the block. And then I take the eyedropper and get the color, for example, like this. And normally we would go right click, get the format shape, fill, and then uh, solid fill, color, more colors. And then here goes our RGB color, which we can, you know, like put it in a VBA code. So here is a small code, which I will also leave in the video description or the link where you can get this. So I use this to, for example, if I run this, it prints this color, which I can directly put it in the user form. It's a bit small that you can see, but uh, so basically it comes up in this format. So I can directly copy paste it to my user form, you know, like control dot by color or for color, for example, is equal to this. Uh, we'll leave the link, uh, but in case you're interested, very simple, first is the slide, picks up the active slide, okay? And then it loops through all the shapes within the within the particular slide, and then get the color, and then calculates the you know red, green, and blue. Find the shape, put a text called RGB, and whatever color it returned, and then it just changed the size to small so that we can still see the color like like this. Yeah. So that's how I got the color, and then I have populated that here in the form. Okay, for example, here are all the main KPIs, header one dot by color is this and this and this and this. Otherwise, you'll have to go and type out everything. Okay, so that's one um, a small, you know, like customization or program I've done to get the color, which you can rerun every time. Uh, every time you rerun, it will wipe out the prior data and then it'll put it back here. So every time you need this color, you can simply go copy this and put it in your code. Yeah. Uh, that's one thing. Um, the other thing is the other customization that I did, like I mentioned, is just um, the menu. So I'll walk you through that as well. Okay, so let me load this up again. Couple of things here is um, this is a replica from our UI and UX episode 18. Uh, it's a free download, so please do uh, check out the video description for that as well. So as you can see here, once you click, it brings up this menu. This menu uh, in the dashboard is designed with exact replication of this. So for example, I've already walked you through this, but uh, make a copy of this even, no matter how many copies you make, um, it is gonna pick up um, the effects uh, automatically. Okay, so these three of them, if I load this up again, as you can see, the effects are picking up automatically, yeah? So the way this is working is um, you just need to copy and paste this. This is for the object. And as the form loads, this part takes care of the menu, basically. It loops through all the controls. And if it finds that uh, the control with the tag EFF for effect, for example, if I go select this, you'll see that uh, here the tag is EFF. So if that is the case, then it creates a new class object. And this class object, uh, you'll find it under the class module here. And this class is basically uh, a label uh, object from the form and it has an event. Um, and then once you select the object, you'll have all the uh, events associated with this label. Uh, so if you want a frame or a text box or something else, um, we have covered these things in detail in the date picker, you know, uh, episodes as well. So do check it out if you want to get more into detail, but this basically gets the click event and the mouse move event. So whenever the mouse is on top of that particular object, it just changes the effect to this uh, special effect. Uh, aged. Okay. Um, but the way that I've done here for um, this dashboard is I just copied and pasted everything and the, uh, the effect is still the same. Everything is the same. Um, the only change I did here is um, 
let me go to class update. This is for episode one. Um, let's take care of the menu. Uh, and this is for this dashboard. Uh, what I've done here is instead of changing the frame, I've just changed the color of the font. Uh, so for example, um, let me load up the form again. Oops, sorry. So once I load up the form, as you can see here, once I hover on top of this menu, then uh, it just changed the font color to blue. Yeah, like this. And if there is a sub menu, then you can further navigate it. So that's I just added a sample of it. And as you hover on top of it, uh, the main menu also changed the color. Yeah, like this. Um, and then I've added some uh, customization as to uh, like in the date picker so that uh, this is um, getting triggered in the mouse move of that particular menu. Um, I'm basically putting a handler that it will run this code only once unless you know like it goes back and forth from other menu. Uh, so it just uh, bring the menu with the sub menu which is already placed in advance uh, which is frame one um, let me come back here and show you so f4 this is frame one so it, once i place my cursor here it brings up it's make this visible and then it's just changed the color of this frame uh, to the same as the menu and then um, the font color changes and the back color is transparent it's automatically changed like that um, so and the replication is done for the rest of them. Um, there are various ways to do this, but what I did was I have a table here to tag which ones are the main menu and then which ones, uh, which of this main menu have the sub menu here, for example. And then as soon as my cursor is on top of uh, this menu, which have uh, a sub menu, there's a handler that I placed here that. Uh, the mouse move is handled from the class. Um, so it resets the effect uh, like the other episodes. And then if there is an effect, it's just changed the four color yeah, to blue, uh, bluish. And then this part handles that, okay, if it has the sub menu, then show the sub menu. And then if it moves away, uh, then hide all the sub menu. Otherwise, the other main thing is, um, the user form mouse move. So as soon as it navigates away from the menu, it hides all the main menu and the sub menu. So I place my cursor here, it brings the menu and the sub menu. But as soon as I go outside of this area, it hides that the menu. Okay. Uh, the way to put the arrow here, um, this can be done for episode one as well. So this particular icon here is basically a queue with the you know, winding tree font type, okay? Uh, similarly here is that uh, a W with the wetting. So once you set this, then you'll have an icon like that. Instead of having to customize it, you can put it in that fashion as well. And then all these icons uh, are designed from PowerPoint. Again, uh, I customized small ones. Uh, you can search the icon from here. And then uh, you can design a small uh, icon like this and then import it here. So as you can see, I click here, these are image ones, yeah? So if you're gonna write and read from those controls, it's better to uh, name them properly from the beginning, but I did this uh, a quick replication, so I did not have time to name all of these controls, uh, but uh, yeah, the idea is the same. Um, everything is pretty much the same. Uh, new chart, uh, but the way it has been designed is everything is the same. Uh, it's just that the back color is darker and then all these are still the same um, as you can see. Okay guys, that's all for this video. I hope you found the video informative and useful. If so, do not forget to leave a like and share them with your friends. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.